Hey, I'm Nolan for AMZ One Step, and this is going to be our Prosper 2022 vlog. And this is Jasleen, she's going to be helping me out during this vlog. Hey guys, my name's Jasleen, like Nolan mentioned. I'm a customer success manager at AMZ One Step, and we're going to check out the Prosper show together, so stay tuned. If you've never attended Prosper and you're just watching this video, learning about Prosper for the first time, I'll just talk a bit about it so you can understand what's going on here. Prosper is an educational hub and a networking hub for everything Amazon. If you are at all involved in the Amazon space or you're looking to get involved in the Amazon space, this is the place to be. There are vendors that are looking to help you with every aspect of your Amazon business. Right here we have our booth, so everything creative when it comes to Amazon, but you can just look around and there is a ton of things. If I just look around really quickly and scan the floor, there's companies that can help you with backing, financial backing. There's companies that can help you with PPC. There's companies that buy other Amazon companies when you're ready to sell your Amazon business. Anything you can think of that you might need help with, there are vendors to help you. As well, you can network with a bunch of great people. There's always people willing to help you. And you can exchange stories and maybe learn from other Amazon sellers. So it's really worth it to come. There's a lot of value in coming to Prosper. As well, there's a ton of great workshops that you can attend and look at different aspects of the Amazon selling experience. You can attend those, learn a ton about different subject matters. As well, another benefit to coming to Prosper is that there's free breakfast and there's free lunch. Okay, so day starts out, we get breakfast at 10 o'clock, so we're gonna eat our breakfast first and then see what Prosper has to offer. All right, so that's a bit about Prosper, and now we have some super cool interviews with some Amazon icons, dare I say, Amazon celebrities. Let's first check out these interviews with Bradley and Norm. Hi everyone, my name is Jasleen with AMZ One Step and we have with us Bradley who definitely does not need any introduction, especially for those people that are familiar with the Amazon industry, but also give him a second just to give us a little spiel, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm the Director of Training and Chief Evangelist at Helium 10, that evangelist is kind of like a religious word almost because I'm spreading the gospel of Helium 10 to the world I guess, <laughs> but uh, I've been there about four years, um, I work a lot with the customers, we do a lot of education, uh, how to sell on Amazon at Helium 10 and of course how to use Helium 10. And before then, uh, I was a consultant for Amazon sellers. I, I, I launched over 400 products and I just love anything and everything Amazon. My name is Norm Farrar. I have uh, a podcast called Lunch with Norm and uh, also a co-founder of Private Label Legion, a uh, group mentoring program. I got a couple other things going too. So we're of course very excited to have him take his time out of his busy day um, to provide us with a short little interview. So we'll get right into it. The first question I have for you is what are the biggest benefits that an Amazon seller can gain from coming to the Prosper show? For me, like, of course, we're, we're right here on the conference floor and then there's also sessions. Those are very valuable, but to me, the more valuable thing when you come to shows like this is the networking. Of course. You know, um, I've talked about this before where my for my whole Amazon journey can be tied back to like a, a random conference I went to yeah. and I got inspired and I made connections there, networking, that to this day, uh, I still have. Some, some of them now even work for Helium 10, you know, and, yeah. and I learned from them and, and now they're learning from me. It's like, it's just like a, a great circle, but if you ever come to shows like Prosper or we're doing a sell and scale, I'm sure you guys will be, will be there, a huge conference. It's like, yes, go to the conference, yeah. meet the exhibitors, go learn from the sessions, but more importantly, find out where the after parties are at and where yeah. the networking things are at. And then don't be shy, go up and meet people and you're gonna find people who, who are, uh, maybe have gone through issues that you are having right now and that can help you, or maybe it's vice versa. Maybe down the line, they're gonna reach out to you. It's like, hey, I heard you had this problem, but build your Amazon network at these conferences for sure. Yeah. You just have to look around. You know, I think there's about 2,000 people here. Of course. There's a ton of events going on right now. Every person you probably want to speak to has a booth here, including you. Yes. So, so you know, why wouldn't you be here if you need to learn? And I mean, 
mean, you can go out and, and put an Amazon listing up. But does that mean you're going to get ranking? Does that mean you're going to have any success? You've got to understand Amazon. So you've got to understand it. These sellers around here are, are going to help you. Of course. There's tons of uh, speakers that are going to be talking. Yeah. And I believe you get the digital recordings, I believe. I think so. And there's some good food. Food? Okay, good food never hurts, first no. off. But like you said, I completely agree. I feel like it's a great opportunity just to network. Yes. Have fun. Enjoy the weather in Las Vegas if you get a chance to get out oh, after yeah. the conference as well, right? Hey, we're, we're from Canada. So this weather for us, it's amazing. <laughs> Nothing goes wrong with this weather. Okay, so moving on. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see Amazon sellers make when first starting out? Oh, Probably the, the biggest mistake is they're being undercapitalized. Okay. Uh, they go by, they might see a 2017 video where somebody says, oh, you can get started with you know a couple hundred bucks, 20, yeah. you know, 2,500 bucks, but you really do have to have the proper capitalization. You have to know your numbers. And if you don't know them, even the smallest, if you're bringing in a product, packaging, Amazon fees, I made that mistake. Mm -hmm. I thought uh, I brought in a very low dollar product at first, yeah, and I didn't know I have to pay 465 minimum charge to Amazon. Yeah, I was making a quarter per product. Of course. So that I paid my Amazon task. That's probably the biggest thing I can say: capitalization, knowing your numbers, but also knowing where to spend good money. There's a lot of places where you can lose your money. Too many, uh, just too many shiny objects. Of course. But you need to have perception, high perception, good copy. Uh, those are areas is where you can't miss out on. And of course, you have to plan for success. If you all of a sudden hit a third base or a home run, you've got to be able to get that inventory in. The latest problem yeah. is where are you getting it from? Supply chain management. Are you going to China? Or can you look locally in the US or in Latin America or Korea or India that could help you out, you know, get your product here? It's probably, uh, it's funny, I, I mentioned this before, but it's like, coming from somebody from Helium 10, it's kind of funny, I guess, to say it, but people get so tied down to like the tools or like the metrics and things, yeah. and algorithms and different things like that, and they forget about at the end of the day, they're selling to a human being. Yeah. So, what you have to do as a new Amazon seller is realize that you have to find that balance. So some people just go all in and they just worry about the buyer, and that's not good because, you know, if you don't have the right keywords in your listing, you'll never be shown on Amazon. Yeah. But on the other side, people are just like, oh, I just need to have exactly this many bytes and, and my, my pixels <laughs> has to be like this and my title has to have this title density and all, which are important things. Of course. But if that's all you're focused on, you're just like keyword stuffing and things, it's not a great experience for the buyer. So, so new sellers out there, make sure you find a balance between those two things. Perfect. So don't forget about the human aspect. At the end of the day, there's a human sitting behind the Amazon screen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so next question for you. How can Amazon sellers prepare for Prime Day? For Prime Day. So like this year, I think uh, they just announced it that you have to have your inventory in by the end of June okay. or June 20th. So I'm assuming that that means Prime Day might be like middle or July or beginning of July. Mm -hmm. But hopefully you already have your product on the way because you know shipping times are crazy these days. So hopefully you've already got your, your product on the way. But I, I would do research. You know, do research on your own ASIN if you're selling, you know, what, what, what were the big keywords mm -hmm. using brand analytics or other services uh, of what you were really converting for our Prime Day. I think April 20th is the last day to get your lightning deals and Prime Day deals in. Yeah. So make sure to submit for that because you can take advantage of tons and tons of, of traffic. But the biggest thing, of course, is just, hey, make sure you've got enough inventory yeah. uh, in and it get, don't wait until July to get it in because it takes forever to get things checked in. So yeah. Get that inventory in by June. Well, the very, absolutely very first thing that they have to do is make sure that they got a very good, highly optimized listing. And it doesn't mean you go to your friends and say, oh, you know, do you like my pictures or do you like my images? You have to go to companies that will give you real, real uh, data. So you go to a company like PicFu or Usability Hub or a company that can give you a, a mini focus group, let's say, yep. to give you the answers. You have to go to a quality um, uh, photographer or a graphic artist. You have to do the proper 
um, competitive analysis. Your keyword research has to be on. You have to make sure that your titles, bullet points, your A plus graphics, you're utilizing any everything. Plus, I would probably nowadays be really focused on building my brand. Yeah. So brand community using Amazon Posts, Amazon Live. Try to build up that community. Amazon says that's what they're looking for. So that's what I would do. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Um, moving on, what is one thing that most Amazon sellers don't know that could improve their Amazon business? <laughs> It's so, it's so crazy, is perception. Okay. So, um, I, I've told this story before, but there's usually three layers of uh, pricing when you go to any search. So, I, I'll use Etsy Mud. I, I've done it, I've, I've researched this. Yeah. And I go and I take a look, first page, there, it ranges from $7 up to about $14.90, well, 15 bucks. That's the first layer. Nobody's making money there. It's just a, it's a Dead Sea Mud, it's a commodity. Nobody is making money on an eight ounce or 16 ounce jar selling it for 14 bucks. Yep. The second tier, all of a sudden you're going from $20 or $29 up to about $49, and you'll see the quality of the images start to uh, improve and yep. the quality of the listing. And they're still eight to 16 ounces. Then you go to the top tier, which is $79 to about $95. The one that's $95 is a 3.5 ounce bottle. So they can go out there and they can you know, go against um, the other competitors. Perception is everything. How you package, the customer experience. When you get that package, are you gonna rebuy? Especially if it's like soap or Dead Sea Mud. So that's what I look at. People leave too much money on the table because they don't improve that customer experience. I would say just metrics. You know, I just mentioned that, hey, don't just focus on the metrics. But at the same time, there's, with tools like Helium 10 and with Amazon itself showing so much data these days, you've just gotta make sure you are taking advantage of that. I mean, yeah. you could literally see nowadays, you know, how many add to carts are you getting? You know, what are the keywords that are driving your sales? What are the keywords that are driving your competitor sales? You know, where are you losing money in PPC? This data is all out there. And it's not, you know, back in the day, like three, four years ago, only if you were like a billion dollar company and paid these agencies like thousands of dollars a month could you see data like this. I mean, anybody, you know, Helium 10, $99 a month, you can have what it used to cost thousands of dollars a month. Amazon is even giving some of that for free if you have a, in brand analytics and things like that. You've got to take advantage of this. So make sure that you guys are all understanding all of your metrics and, and then implementing what you learn in your business. Okay, great. And what is one thing you wish you knew before you started selling on Amazon? I probably wish I just knew when and what things were going to change. You know, okay. there, there have been some big changes that have happened on Amazon that just came out of the blue. You know, like a few years ago, it used to be okay. You, you might be, you might not know this, but <clears throat> it used to be okay to incentivize reviews, like like four years ago, where you can like give oh, a free okay. product yeah. and, 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 and then ask for a review. That was like, not only was it allowed, it would even have a special badge, like the review would say, oh yeah, this was in exchange for a free product. Yeah. Then overnight, it's like, nope, can't do not that allowed. no more. Not allowed, don't you know? do that, yeah. Before we used to use, you know, two-step URLs and search fine by, and then just yeah. one day, boom, you can't do anymore. So it's kind of, it would have been nice to know when, and so I, you could prepare a little bit better, yeah. but that's, that's important, like, that's the thing. You're not gonna know when things are gonna change on Amazon, so it's important to always have backup plans for your strategies. Of course. And not base all of your strategies just on one thing, where if that one thing changes, your business comes crumbling down because you have no idea what to do anymore. Last question, okay. what qualities do you look for, when, for in a product when looking for a new product to sell? Well, I, competition really doesn't worry me as long as I'm, I have the ability to inject the capital needed. Okay. Okay, because it, it, it really depends. If I'm gonna get into a supplement, yep. I know that I gotta spend money. Of course. But what I will look at is a niche that there might be a keyword. This comes back down to keyword research and your product um, uh, or your competitive analysis. Yeah. Is there an area that I can take or take control of um, that might be slightly different? So it might be, uh, 
I, I use my buddy Tim Jordan. Yep. He came up with a plastic egg holder in, uh, in Project X. Yes. Well, it was saturated. They found a wood egg holder. Yes, I remember. We'd actually talked about this at the Edmonton conference. I remember you yeah. do this. Exactly. And, it, you know, it was very low competition then. He killed it. And I think Bradley was involved with that as well. I know yeah. he was involved with Project X. Yeah. And then now it's saturated. Yeah. But he was able to take advantage of a niche market within a very competitive market just by going after that. So that's those types of keywords or long tail keywords that people, a lot of people make the mistakes of going after a primary keyword and they're not looking at those niche keywords or long tail keywords where you can make some money. Of course, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Really appreciate your time. We know it's super busy with Prosper and everything else going on. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. You are very welcome. Okay, perfect. For me, um, I like just looking at some really emerging demand, but almost no competition. Okay. So that's just one of the ones that I've been using lately. It, it, it kind of lowers my ceiling, yeah. you know, but I love going into ones where there's like, not only low competition, like no competition, you know, okay. like the Project X coffin shelf. Yeah. There was nobody who had the coffin shelf. You guys actually just took a whole bunch of pictures yes, for Yes, we us. did, I remember. You, you are very <laughs> intimate with coffin shelves now. But I love getting in there because uh, there was literally nobody. There was like one guy who would be selling it and he would be out of stock like 75% of the year. Yeah. So on the, it's not to say that on the flip side, hey, looking for something that's high demand, there's a lot of sales, like 10 good competitors. Some people are like, oh, that's good for me. Yeah. And that's that's fine. Yeah. But then it just takes a lot of effort to like, you know, keep your position and compete with those guys. I like just getting in on, on niches where I almost don't have to compete with anybody and so I can set the market and I don't have to, I, you know, my bids for Coffin Shelf are main keywords when they start, it's like 15 cents. Like, like, yeah. like that's unheard that's of, insane. you know? Yeah. You know, so I love doing those kind of things. Okay, perfect. So that wraps up our question and answer period. Thank you so much for taking out the time, Bradley. We really appreciate it. We know you're a busy man, but thank you so much. Thank you. So we gained a ton of knowledge from those interviews. Then I headed over and checked out what our CEO, Kamal, thought of the conference. All right, so we are back here at the AMZ One Step booth, and we are here with the main man, the boss, Kamal, and we're just asking, how is Prosper Show going so far? No, no, the Prosper Show has been phenomenal so far. You know, we met with uh, so many of our previous clients, you know, who come at the Prosper Show every single year. It's so good to see them again. Met with, you know, amazing vendors, amazing, you know, Amazon sellers. Made some, you know, great connections, and this year has been even, you know, uh, bigger than the last year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, the exhibition hall looks great. The speakers are, you know, uh, top of the notch. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited and I'm already looking forward to the next year's Prosper. You know, this this has been a success for AMZ One Step. This has been a success for Prosper Show uh, management team. Congratulations to them. And I think it's, uh, you know, they have put on a good show. Yeah, definitely. Finally, I was lucky enough to interview Ryan, the CEO of Elevate Brands. So now let's check that one out. Okay guys, so we are here at the Elevate Brands booth. I am here with Ryan, the CEO. So Ryan, do you want to just tell us a bit about what Elevate Brands is all about? Yeah, sure. We're, uh, we, uh, we acquire Amazon businesses and uh, we elevate them to their full potential. So we've got a team of 250 people. Okay. Uh, and when a business comes in, we optimize creative, the SEO, the PPC, the logistics. Uh, and we really try and grow the businesses, multi-channel expansion, geographic expansion. Okay. Uh, that's what we do. Okay, Ryan, so maybe you could uh, clue us in a bit about how the process works with Elevate Brands when you're looking to acquire an Amazon brand. Yeah, sure. So if a seller is interested in selling, uh, we'll typically meet with them and, um, and we'll discuss kind of high level terms about what they're looking for. We're pretty flexible with the way we approach these businesses. So um, in some cases, we buy the business outright. In other cases, the seller is interested in potentially staying on right. and wants to keep running the business, but wants to maybe take some chips off the table. Uh, and maybe they want to have some uh, additional help in how to scale the business. Right. So oftentimes we'll find sellers where we do like a JV 50-50, okay. where they do what they love, we help them with maybe it's the supply chain or some other areas of the business that they don't enjoy doing. Right. And then together, kind of the one and one is three. So um, we're flexible, we first understand what the seller's looking for. 
Uh, we, we, we dig in and understand the business, and that can take a few days. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, typically, if, if that makes sense, we'll put that together a proposal with some high-level terms. Okay. And once we agree to that, uh, we sign the LOI, and then due diligence usually takes a few weeks, mm -hmm. maybe a couple of months, depending on the complexity of the business or or, um, or the number of SKUs. Right. Uh, and then uh, at the end of that process, we we, we do the deal. Okay. Right? And that's and it's pretty straightforward. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So the next question I wanted to ask you is: Do you guys look for anything specific when acquiring a brand, or is it very uh, flexible when you're looking for something? You know, we have we, we have rigid criteria that we look for, but the criteria are somewhat flexible. So, um, what I mean by that is we're agnostic to category. Okay. So we don't mind. There's there's a couple of categories that we tend to avoid. Okay. For the most part, we're pretty flexible on which categories we look for. Right. Uh, what we're really looking for is is a business that has a great product. Right. right. How do you know it's a great product? Well, it's got a lot of reviews and they're kind of highly rated reviews. Right. Right. Um, we love businesses that have patents. We love we love we love businesses that are growing quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we love businesses that are in sort of underserved niches where there's a bit of a supply demand kind of disconnect that we think we can take advantage of. Right. We love businesses that we think we can grow by taking it, let's say Amazon International, or right. taking it to uh, Target or Walmart or some other marketplaces. Mm. Um, and so, you know, that's typically what we look for. Okay. In some cases, we bring on the team as well. Right. So if that's the case, we're obviously looking for a high quality team. Uh, we're looking for value alignment. Uh, but in some cases, the seller is looking to just sell the business outright and not looking to stay on, and that's okay as well. Perfect, perfect, okay. So the last question I have is, what can brands do to increase their value before you purchase them? You know, is there patents, is there IP stuff that they can work on, or what is attractive when you're looking to purchase the brand? Yeah, yeah, patents and IP certainly, you know, if it's got a utility, a design patent is good, a utility patent is better. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if the business has launched a number of new SKUs that have just gone live or are going live over the next few months, like yeah. that's super helpful as well because, you know, when we buy businesses, we're looking for businesses that are going to grow after we buy them. Yeah, we're not looking sure. to buy a business that's going to stay steady. So, of course, we have to put in a bunch of work to grow the business, but if the seller's already put in the work and it's already growing, that just mm. makes our job a lot easier and enables us to justify the investment and maybe even paying a premium for it. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much for this information. I hope it helps a lot of Amazon sellers and Hopefully, when they're ready to sell their business, they'll come to Elevate Brands. So, Ryan, thank you so much. Thanks very much. And Good yeah, luck to you guys. Thanks so much. No worries. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bradley, Norm, and Ryan, we really appreciate you taking the time to do those interviews. You guys provided so much valuable information, and I'm sure it'll help a lot of Amazon sellers on their journeys. Also, thank you to everybody who came out and checked out the booth. The team and I had a ton of fun talking to everybody and you guys really made it a special Prosper show for us. If you didn't make it this year, be sure to come check out the AMZ One Step booth at next year's Prosper. If you're saying, Nolan, I still need to know more about Prosper, don't worry, I got you covered because I've created a video from last year that I'll probably link here or here that you can check out and it should tie up all loose ends. Lastly, be sure to like and subscribe as it helps out the channel and we're putting out weekly videos that help out Amazon FBA sellers. Thanks and I'll see you next time.